Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is John Hoyer, and welcome to this episode of The Last Science Show. Today, we are going to be talking about kinetic energy, and we are even going to complete some kinetic energy problems. Let's dive right in. Before we go too deep, we know that this episode is called kinetic energy, and we can't define kinetic energy without defining energy. Simply put, energy is defined as the ability or capacity to do work. Not only does it take energy to move something, One, two, three. Wow. Wow. but energy is also released when an object slows down. If a force does not move a body, then no work is done. Standing still may be tiring, but no physical work over a distance is done. This mathematical formula can help us understand the concept of work. Work equals force times distance. W equals FD. You can exert a large, great force on an object. But if no distance is covered, the amount of work done is zero. In mathematics, any number multiplied by zero is zero. Therefore, if distance is zero, no matter what the force is, your total amount of work will be zero. Holding a heavy object may take energy to keep it up off the ground. but no work is done over a distance. Therefore, there are two types of energy, potential and kinetic. What is kinetic energy? Kinetic energy can be defined as the energy of motion. Matter in motion has kinetic energy. Motion. 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 Kinetic energy depends on an object's mass and velocity. The faster something is moving and or the larger it is, the more kinetic energy it has. Kinetic energy is the motion of waves, electrons, atoms, molecules, substances, and objects. The motion can be large, such as with celestial bodies in orbit, moving organisms, objects, machines, wind, waves, waves and sound, or the motion can be small such as with heated particles, the flow of charges, or changing electrical and magnetic fields. Kinetic energy of motion is mechanical energy in the movement of objects. It takes energy to get an object moving, and energy is released when an object slows down. Wind and waves are an example of motion energy, motion energy. Energy is also defined as the work done by a force acting over a distance and is measured in units of Newton meters called joules or J. No work is done if the force does not move the body. Standing still may be tiring, but no physical work over a distance is done. In physics, the context is important especially when mechanical energy refers to the sum of the potential and kinetic energy in a system. Kinetic energy depends on an object's mass and velocity. A larger fast car will have greater kinetic energy than a small or slow car.
potential energy, which we will talk about in another video, is energy that is stored in a system. In science, the term potential means the object's own ability to carry out a certain kind of work. However, it does not necessarily present the work. For example, imagine you are about to drop a large rock at the top of a cliff. Ready? Ready? One, yeah. Two. Let's swing. One, two, three. Uh, position A. Does the rock have energy there or not? The answer is yes. Though the rock is held in place with no velocity, it still possesses potential energy due to the force of gravity acting upon it as it is about to fall. In addition, what is the related potential energy and total energy in this system at position A at the top of the hill? Since the velocity of the rock is zero, the kinetic energy is zero. Thus, the total energy must be all contributed by the potential energy. However, if the rock is dropped, the object will then have kinetic energy, the type of energy that is due to movement or motion. Three, three. Three. If you know the distance traveled by an object and how long it takes, the speed of the object can be calculated using this equation. Speed equals distance over time. For a given mass, the kinetic energy of the object in motion can be calculated using this equation. Ke equals one half mass times velocity squared. There is a direct relationship between mass and kinetic energy. As the mass increases, the kinetic energy increases. This relationship is proportional to the mass of the moving object and increases with the square of its velocity. When an object rolls down an incline, the mass of the object affects its kinetic energy. the average speed of each ball rolling down the same ramp for the same distance can be used to calculate the kinetic energy of each ball. What have I done? The kinetic energy of an object in motion is proportional to the mass of the object and grows with the square of its velocity. The mass of each ball is different. As the mass of the ball increases, the kinetic energy of the ball also increases. Other examples of increased kinetic energy due to a faster speed or having more mass include a faster bicycle rider. Front. Different tactics going to be adopted now. The Russian starts to accelerate a little bit. Botticha has him where he wants him. Hitting a golf ball instead of a table tennis ball. and rolling a car with more mass down an incline. So, now that we have an understanding of kinetic energy, let's do some math kinetic energy problems. Once again, we want to remember that the unit for energy is joules, or J for short, which is named after James Joule the individual who coined the unit for energy, but named it after himself. Just like good old Isaac Newton. Oh, the narcissism of it all. Let's start with this problem. Jackie Robinson swung a bat, which had a mass of two kilograms at a velocity of 45 meters per second. How many joules of kinetic energy could he give to a ball? We need our equation, Ke equals one half mass times velocity squared. Plug in the values they gave you. If you have a calculator, this is a piece of cake, chocolate cake specifically. Very easy, you'll get your answer. This problem is asking us for the amount of kinetic energy Jackie could give to the ball. That means we will need our kinetic energy formula, 
Ke equals one half mass times velocity squared. The mass is two kilograms. The velocity is 45 meters per second. All you have to do is plug those two values into the kinetic energy formula. Get out your calculator and bam, there's your answer, 2025 joules. Remember, the units must be joules because all energy is measured in joules. Barry Bonds swings a bat which has a mass of 1.5 kilograms at a velocity of 55 meters per second. How many joules of kinetic energy could he give to a ball? Routing the plate. The pitch. There's a long one to right field. Forget about it. This one is headed for New Jersey. High into the upper deck. Barry Bonds with a spectacular three-run homer. Once again, this problem is asking us for the kinetic energy. So we'll need our formula. Ke equals one half mass times velocity squared. The mass is 1.5 kilograms. The velocity is 55 meters per second. If you take a half of 1.5, you'll get 0.75 kilograms. You simply plug that into the formula along with squaring the velocity. So it's 55 squared times 0.75 and then you'll get your answer. Which is more important to hitting a home run? A heavier bat or a faster swing? I mean, he Which is more important to hitting a home run, a heavier bat or a faster swing? In order to answer this question correctly, we need to understand the kinetic energy formula. Ke equals one half mass times velocity squared. The answer is a faster swing simply because the formula shows us that velocity is squared so velocity affects kinetic energy more than mass does so if the bat had more mass that could affect its kinetic energy obviously but a faster swing has a greater effect because the velocity is squared so your final answer would be a faster swing is more important to hitting a home run a golf pro swings his driver, which weighs 0.75 kilograms, at a velocity of 60 meters per second. Calculate the kinetic energy of the club. Like our other problems, we have to make sure we first identify what they're asking for. We know they're asking for the kinetic energy, and they clearly show us what the values of M and V are. Mass is 0.75 kilograms, and V, velocity, is 60 meters per second. When we plug that in to our kinetic energy formula, we'll arrive at our answer smoothly. Calculate the kinetic energy of a car which has a mass of 1,000 kilograms and is moving at the rate of 20 meters per second. They're asking you for the kinetic energy of a car which has a mass of 1,000 kilograms and is moving at the rate of 20 meters per second. Plug in the, the value of the mass, 1,000 kilograms, into the formula and plug in the velocity. And remember to take half of the mass multiplied by the square of the velocity. Once you do that, you'll arrive at the correct answer. What is the kinetic energy of a soccer ball which has a mass of 0.8 kilograms and is kicked at a velocity of 10 meters per second? Calculate the kinetic energy of a running back that has a mass of 80 kilograms and is running at a velocity of 8 meters per second. 
Left tackle running room, 30. He may score to the 20, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Dallas. Lastly, we're going to calculate the kinetic energy of a running back that has a mass of 80 kilograms and is running at a velocity of 8 meters per second. We need our formula. Kinetic energy equals 1 half times mass times velocity squared. Plug 80 kilograms into the M for mass and 8 into the V for velocity. And once you calculate it correctly, you'll have your answer. That was a lot. We sure hope you enjoyed this extensive episode of The Last Science Show. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share for more videos. We'll see you next time. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good science.